David and Goliath fighting inside the country's highest court, except both David and Goliath grow food for a living. That's if you want to consider what Goliath grows as food. RT's Jahan Hafiz has more. It's incredible what is going on. It's the case of a multinational corporation versus small time America. For the first time in U.S. history, the Supreme Court will hear arguments against genetically engineered crops and the dangers they pose to the environment and our health. The battle here is against Monsanto. Gertzen Seeds Farming contends the corporate giant is in violation of FDA regulation. Monsanto is king of the genetically engineered world, a global biotechnology agrochemical giant. It's well known for dominating the farming industry in the U.S. and worldwide. Recently, its controversial practices have brought Phil Gertzden, an alfalfa farmer from Idaho, to the Supreme Court. They don't tell the truth. They don't do the experiments that are necessary to prove that their items are safe. Uh, the case is the round of alfalfa and contamination of conventional and organic uh, alfalfa and the right of farmers uh, that want to grow natural and organic alfalfa. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has been investigating Monsanto's Roundup herbicide to determine whether its alfalfa poses any safety and health risks. However, despite lacking a review from the FDA, Monsanto's alfalfa seeds can be found in farmlands nationwide. What do you think Monsanto's trying to do by testing things that haven't been approved by the USDA or the FDA? Well, they're, they're wanting to get their products out there quickly so that they can make a large profit. Monsanto insists a federal court decision to ban the planting of its alfalfa seeds back in 2007 was misguided, and the Supreme Court will vote in their favor after the USDA wraps up its investigation. Because some people were wanting to have uh, their, their fields free of uh, Roundup Ready alfalfa, that could coexist uh, even if the federal government approved this product for continued planting, and it's inevitable in about a year. But environmentalists and farmers again. Monsanto could be in for a rude awakening when the Supreme Court's final decision is announced in June. They, they do have a friend on the high court, and it's Chief Justice Thomas, who is a former uh, Monsanto attorney. That's because top positions in the Food and Drug Administration and the Department of Agriculture are filled with former Monsanto lobbyists. If the merits rule, then we'll win. And if Monsanto's influence and power rule, then, then perhaps they'll, they'll win. In the case of corporate Monsanto versus America's small farming industry, the revolving doors of influence could determine an outcome that could potentially affect our health and environment for years to come. Jahan Hafez, RT, Washington, D.C. And joining us about the, the proceedings of this case is RT's uh, Jahan Hafiz, who I know you told me that uh, you corrected me. I was mispronouncing your first name, so I apologize for that. Right. Uh, but let's go uh, to, the, the, to the very basic question of the small farmers, Monsanto, Monsanto being the big farmers, you know, the big conglomerate, whatever, right? right. How do they feel about their individual cases? Well, we spoke with um, officials from Monsanto today. They're very excited about the case because essentially um, they're looking to overturn a ban that was uh, upheld by a federal court in 2007, which banned the alfalfa seeds from being grown in the, in the United States. The small farmers, on the other hand, are also very optimistic because on their side they have plenty of evidence against Monsanto for FDA violations and so on and so forth. But on top of that, um, the USDA did not investigate and did not clarify or excuse me, do not clear Monsanto's alfalfa seeds for the market. So it's actually unregulated um, seeds that are being um, put out there. Not anymore, however, and the small farmers in this case, Gertz and Seeds Farming, they're fighting to keep that intact because without that, really, it's going to create this situation in the United States where organic farming is pretty much outlawed because Monsanto, as it is very well known, is synonymous for litigating small farmers into an oblivion, um, which is the case right now. But the reason this is, a, this is going to be a landmark case in June is because it's the first time in U.S. history genetically modified foods, genetically engineered products are being challenged by the Supreme Court. So it's definitely going to be something that will be developing more over time. But for the most part, both camps of the party are very excited about the case and their sides of the case. But I mean, as, as I was listening to your story, it kind of sounded like in some ways it was kind of stacked. Uh, I'm being told that I, I need to hurry up and wrap up, so I wish we could get the answer to that, but uh, good job getting both sides of the story and, and, and talking about this a little bit more. We'll just have to see what, uh, what shakes down in, in the Supreme Court after this. Definitely. Thank you for joining us.